Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel Hell Dominance. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you're seeing and if you want to continue seeing more. Coming up in this episode, a Monday morning downer for three stories. As Cody Ramsey, Korea, hangs in the balance. George Burgess retires from Rugby League. And the passing of Doddy Weir. So we start today with the news that Tom Burgess has decided to retire from Rugby League at 30 years old due to persistent injuries causing him to suffer during the league career. The former England Pop announced his immediate retirement and the Dewsbury born player shared this decision via social media over the weekend, confirming that injuries have ended his in career prematurely. Burgess, alongside his twin, older twin brother Tom, began his career at Bradford Bulls Juniors before heading down under to South Sydney Rabbitohs, where he won the Premiership in 2014 and made 153 appearances in the competition. After an injury hit spell with Wigan Warriors, Burgess signed a two-year contract with St. George Illawarra Dragons last year, but last month was released from his final year of his contract. He made four appearances for the Dragons as well as playing in their New South Wales team during that period. The forward won the Daily M Rookie of the Year in two, award in 2013 and made 15 appearances for England while also representing England Knights twice. He featured for Wigan in 2020 before departing on medical grounds, having made eight appearances that year. Burgess wrote on social media, It is with a heavy heart that I officially announced my retirement from Rugby League. I've been dreaming, it's been a dream come true to live out my boyhood dream and represent my family and country through my time, especially at the South Sydney Rabbit Holes and England. Unfortunately, injuries ended my career before I would have liked, but I'm a happy man walking away from this beautiful game with what's my with my achievements. I want to thank all my coaches and teammates over the years who helped me along with my loving family and wife. Run out. The youngest Burgess came to recognition around the world as he represented England against the Australian schoolboys in 2010 while playing the lower grades and training with the full squad of Bradford Bulls. But on January the 1st 2011, George was signed by the South Sydney Rabbitohs to play in the national youth competition and the NRL in the future. Then 2012 came along. And in round 13, Burgess made his NRL debut for the South Sydney Rabbitohs against the Canterbury Bulldogs off the interchange bench in a Rabbitohs loss of 23 points to 18 at the ANZ Stadium. Burgess played three matches for South Sydney in his debut year in the NRL. But his first career highlight was in 2013 as he joined his brother's Luke, Sam and Tom on the pitch for the and became the first set of four brothers to line up in the same Australia side since Ray, Roy, Rox and Bernard Norman all played for Sydney's Annandale club in, two, in 1910. The youngest Burgess went on to be the Rookie of the Year that year after a stellar year with the South Sydney club. Then in 2014, his career peaked as a South player with a trophy and a medal. As in October the 5th, 2014, Souths played Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs, the team that he debuted against, and they won the grand final 30 points to 6 with to uh, George scoring an incredible try. With Luke leaving the club prior to the, uh, the season, it was left to Tom, Sam and George to be the forward line for the club, with Sam winning the Man of the Match award. 
constant member of the South squad until 2019, playing 149 appearances for South Sydney, scoring 13 tries. A three-year deal for Wigan was signed in 2019 for the 2020 season, which saw George move back to England, but over to Lancashire this time. He made his eight appearances for Wigan, scoring one try, but this was hampered by a major hip injury ending this season. In February 2021, the club announced that George and the club had become a party ways through mutual consent after he was released from his contract and after an operation on his hip schedule for March 2021 which would see his, him spend most of the year undergoing physical rehabilitation uh, program during that time. It was an experimental surgery as he underwent what was called hip resurfacing surgery in a bid to shake off pain that he had been suffering with with this hip issue for quite some time. Nobody had ever come back to play rugby league with this surgery, but not only did Burgess come back from the recuperation ready to go, he signed in the NRL for the South uh, St. George Illawarra Dragons. But while that didn't get off to the best of starts with a couple of police incidents, he made four appearances and appeared for the club's New South Wales Cup side during that time. On the international scene, it was also indifferent for Burgess, unfortunately, as he played for the England Knights team, but then was selected to play in England's 2013 Rugby League World Cup squad. It featured in the 15 points to 14 friendly loss to Italy, and also in the first pool match against Australia, where he scored his first international try in a 28 points to 20 loss at the Millennium Stadium. He was also um, involved in the semi-final against New Zealand. Less about said about that, the better. In 2016, uh, sorry, 14, he was selected for the Four Nations squad, and he played in three matches in the tour in the tournament as well. He was selected for the 24-man squad again for the Four Nations in 2016 and played all three matches off the interchange bench in the match, in the scene, in the series. But he was not selected in the England squad for the 2017 Rugby League World Cup held in Australia, although his brothers Sam and Thomas were selected. His last appearance for England was against New Zealand as England won 20 points to 14. But it was a suspension from that match that led him to miss the start of the 2019 NRL season. We've, we've basically stuck to his rugby league career during this um, summary as George has been a solid prop for whichever club he's played for and good enough to be an Englishman to be traded into the NRL competition not once but twice so he has to be acknowledged as one of the best imports from uh, from England to go to play in Australia on the grand final he's won the Daily M medal in his younger years his career may have plateaued a little bit further on and never reached the heights of that 2014 but he continued to represent his club admirably. Good luck, George, and whatever you do next. And I uh, hope you get that happiness and satisfaction as you did from the sport. I was shot yesterday to hear the, the sad passing of Doddy Wheat, who died after a six year battle with the neuron disease. He has been a fantastic supporter for motor neuron disease and his charity, My Name's Doddy, name S with a five, has raised over £8 million for the charity during the six years that he has been involved in it. 
we're as a rugby union international uh, for Scotland and the British and Irish Lions, uh, but he passed away on Saturday. He earned 61 caps in playing his playing career before retiring in 2004 was diagnosed with motor neuron disease in 2016 and used his profile to push for better research in the disease as well as appealing for more and improved care to be given to those who affect who were affected he was a friend of rob burrow's mbe and kevin sinfield as well who has helped run for the charity and sinfield has done numerous physical endurance challenges in those two peoples and the rest of the MND community uh, name to um, help raise money to find a cure to this debilitating and undiscriminating disease. After hearing the announcement of Doddy's passing, Kevin on the right, seen here with Doddy, that's the start of one of his legs of the Ultra 7 Marathon. He wrote a statement uh, via Leeds Rhinos website saying, Today is a deeply sad day for everyone who knew Doddy, but especially his family, who are at the forefront of our thoughts. Doddy was a giant as a player, and but his campaigning following his motor neuron disease diagnosis made him a colossus. When Brian Redpath put me in touch with Doddy to speak to Rob Burrow following Rob's own diagnosis, he immediately said yes, without hesitation. The sight of 5 foot 4 Rob and 6 foot 6 Doddy was something that will live with me, well, live with all of us, and probably bonded the duo with the great humour they shared. Doddy was able to give Rob the greatest gift of hope that night. He has been like a big brother to all of us since that day. I know, on behalf of the whole Ultra 7 in 7 team, it was our ultimate honour that Doddy was at Murrayfield just two weeks ago when we set off on our fundraising challenge. With his trademark smile, he insisted that he wanted to be there with his pink trainers on. The fact that a proportion of the money raised from the Ultra 7 in 7 will go to the foundation set up by Doddy has particularly, is, has particularly poignant, a particular poignancy as we look to continue his legacy on in the years ahead. I'm honoured to have been able to call Doddy my friend, and I know his spirit lives on in all of us who knew him. He will always be a champion. The sense of humour was there to see with Doddy Weir, as he, Rob Burrow, and Stephen Darby, the ex-footballer who also suffers from motor neuron disease, post for this picture. It's quite a sight. Rob, though, did release his own statement. That has a bit of a tinge of anger alongside it. So sad to hear the news of the passing of my modern neuron disease hero, Doddy Weir, tweeted Burrow. I'm sorry to say, how many more warriors die before the stupid government give the £50 million they said they would give? I'm absolutely gutted to see my friendly giraffe die. You are the reason for me being so positive. Rest in peace. Rob Burrow continued with his glowing praise for a man that has inspired him with his positive attitude, uh, outlook and attitude and was central to how Rob decided he was going to take his own challenge with M&D, he wrote in the Daily Telegraph. He continued, his attitude was exactly what I needed. When I was diagnosed, all anyone told me about was how bad it would be. But Doddy was totally different. I suppose, being sports people, we see challenges and think about how we can beat them and turn things in our favour. He showed us all the way and did it every time with a laugh and a joke. 
He gave the MND community a voice and become a beacon of light that we could all follow. My thoughts, like so many others at this time, go out to his wife Kathy, his sons Hamish, Angus, Ben, friends, and the rest of his family of George Wilson Doddy Weir. And the hits keep on turning as now we come to the news that Dragon's fullback Cody Ramsey is battling a serious injury that could force him to give up rugby league in its entirety. News Corp have revealed that the 22 year old has spent the past fortnight in hospital after being diagnosed with ulcerative colitis and may require surgery. The disease causes inflammation and ulcers on the bowel and the digestive tract and is often caused by an immune system malfunction. Ramsey's mum Kim told News Corp that he was admitted to hospital after experiencing severe pain following a long distant run at training. Cody thought it was just a bug and ran his nine and a half kilometers, she said. And that's where it unraveled. His immune system was fighting something it couldn't fix. The doctor originally said he might need surgery and it could end his footy career. I've never seen him so sick and in so much pain. Fortunately, he's progressing now and we're hopeful he'll be okay to play again next season. He's a tough cookie and he'll hopefully be back in the new year, but he's important. But as long as I've got a healthy boy, family is everything. Ramsey, who faces another two weeks in hospital, is being treated with a government funded drug called Infliximab, which costs $12,000 per injection. To put it in some context, that's £6,000 per injection in the UK, and takes two hours to inject the dose. Kim also praised Dragon's coach, Anthony Griffin, who has been in constant constant contact with her and Cody both. You know what? That man is one in a million, Kim said of Griffin. He has rung me every single day. He has texted Cody every single day. He has gone to the ward and visited him at the hospital a couple of times. He cares so much for all of his players and he's treated Cody like a son. Can't thank him enough. When he rings, he's never in a rush. Honestly, the nicest man. It's a devastating blow to a career of a young man who has gained so much traction in a team in the NRL. As he managed to overtake Tyrell Sloan last season as a Dragons first choice fullback, but his health comes first. I'm glad he's got his support network and for all these stories you've got to see the positive in everything afterwards. I know the passing of Doddy would, would be very very sad. The support network and the people that he inspired, that's the one thing I take from that story. Cody Ramsey, his coach never giving up on him, still keeping in touch, talking to him, seeing him through. Hopefully he is successful and comes back because he's only a young man. He deserves to live his dream, get some positivity in this rugby league world. He started off last season on the wing and shifted to the number one jersey in round 11 and retained it for the remainder of the season. So he must be well thought of as a player at the, as well as a person with the coach being involved in day in day out. I know we've had comments about Anthony Griffin throughout the entire uh, through the last I don't know year of my videos, but there's still people, and as long as people treat people like people, that's all I care about in the end. The other parts I just believe. Good luck with this, uh, Cody uh, Ramsey. I do hope. That we see you on the pitch again and in full health, going at full throttle.
So that's it for another episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe and share this video worldwide, as well as clicking on that notification bell for any updates or new videos that may be coming your way in the near future. I would normally say, um, tell me what your thoughts are on this episode, and uh, comments about the videos that we've gone through. But I'm going to do something different, as we all understand that men are the worst people in the world for talking about their emotions, whether they're sad, depressed, or anything like that. When you hear, yep, I'm fine, when you ask someone, are they okay, go deeper. That little talk can make the world a difference to that person's day, and they won't realise it sometimes, but other times, I'll be grateful. If you have anything, make sure that you're checking up, checking in with someone. Make sure you're getting everything that you need to look after yourself. Make sure that you're having mental health breaks. Give yourself time out. Give yourself a minute. Talk to people if you can't just shake it off. Not alone in this. Everyone has problems. Not unique in that aspect. But different levels of problems. Different levels of help. Need help. Reach out. I can talk to you over the chat. Send you positive messages. Only so much I can do. Make sure your support network are there to help you. Tell them if you're in trouble. If they can't help, see your doctor. See what they can do. But ask to speak to a professional. We all need you in this world better in this world than out of it. Just want to talk? Talk. Love yourself, people. Again, wish you all the very best. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to share, share, share this video worldwide. And I'll see you in the next episode.